Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. So today I wanted to take a look at uh, the stock setups you have in Bobcad, uh, stock options, and the effects that they have on your uh, toolpath. Okay, so here we have, you know, just the 3D part we want to rough out. So we'll, we'll set up our machine and again you have a couple of different types of stock we'll start with rectangular that's typically one of the more common that's just going to generate a, a box based off the minimum maximum of your geometry and then uh, we'll just set our origin on top center and we'll choose OK all right so now from here I'm just gonna load up our advanced roughing strategy let me just edit the tool here and adjust some settings. All right. And then we'll compute. All right, so when you're working with the uh, uh, adaptive roughing or advanced roughing or our pro 3D roughing tool path, you're going to notice that the tool path is generated uh, between the stock geometry and the solid geometry that you've selected. You'll also notice that uh, the tool is starting on the outside uh, off the stock and working its way in. Okay, And you're going to find that to be true with all the different stock types. Uh, the tool path will be generated uh, between the stock and the solid that you've selected. Uh, to kind of exemplify this, we're going to go back to rectangular here and I'm going to add an uh, inch and a half offset in X okay and then uh, we'll go ahead and just uh, so you can see there's some some extra stock here now okay so we're gonna go ahead and recompute our toolpath and now you're gonna see that toolpath is gonna go out and it's gonna cut that extra inch and a half of material because again the toolpath is being generated between the stock and the solid geometry you've selected all right so now Let's go ahead and take a look at the cylindrical geometry, or cylindrical stock. So we'll just bump up the diameter here, and then uh, what we'll do is just recomputer toolpath. And what we're seeing, or what we'll see, is the same exact thing. The toolpath is being generated between the, the stock and the geometry, starting off the part and working its way in. Now, uh, rectangular and cylindrical is, is common, but what if you have a pre-machine part or a casted part, you know? How do you limit the tool path uh, to just cutting where there's material? And there's a really simple uh, answer to this. Uh, you use solid stock, okay? So I'm gonna blank out my tool path here. I'm gonna create a new layer, and then on this layer, I'm gonna just extract some wireframe for this face. Okay, so now, now we have some wireframe here. Let me uh, just turn off my axis indicator. All right, and then, uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, so I have some wireframe. I'm going to generate uh, a surface based off of extrude curve. We'll make this six inches. Window this in. Space bar. Right click. Okay. All right. So now we have this uh, this model here and that's going to represent either our pre-machined or our casted part okay and what we want to have happen is just where uh, the stock is you know where the stock is we want that to be where the tool path is generated so we're not cutting a bunch of air all right so the process is the same as the previous routines we'll come in to our stock and instead of rectangular or cylindrical, this time we're going to choose solid model. We'll go ahead and select the solid model and we'll choose next and then OK. And at this time, instead of it being a rectangle or a cylinder, we have the solid model stock. OK, so just like in the previous examples, the tool path will be generated between the, the stock uh, and the part. So we'll go ahead and recompute. And then I'll unblank. Uh, well, okay, I have I have my toolpath showing here, so you can see uh, how the toolpath is just being generated where there's material. So this is a very powerful feature in the software, very useful, allowing you to uh, control your boundary of cutting, uh, limiting it just where material is, 
And uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, you know, or input, you know, feel free to reply back into the thread, the Facebook, or the YouTube page. Uh, I'll um, end off in a simulation, and we'll catch up in the next video. Thank you so much, guys.